thanks for tuning in. Um, wow, it feels like we're back in lockdown again doing these. Um, but it's great to see you all here. Um, it's great to have you join us. Um, and we are waiting to talk to uh, a guy who sadly uh, isn't here this weekend, um, who we all absolutely adore and wish well. Um, and uh, is a guy who, of course, survived an absolute well let him tell you about it when uh, when he joins in um because he's back at home in switzerland and i think he's going to come up now and say hello hello mate hey how are you i'm really good how are you more to the point i'm all right i'm all right i mean uh, it's a bit uh, strange to see the the race from home um but uh, i guess 50 percent i could have been driving Another fifty percent, not so much. So I think it was the right decision. It was a tough one, but uh, obviously for my health and, and the future, I had to go back home. Yeah, absolutely. And how was it to be home to see the kids? That was good. That was very good. I mean, they uh, loads of questions. Uh, spoke a lot about it. Um, yeah, you know, Sasha, my seven years old son, is asking me every day to stop racing. Um, if he wants me to be a tennis player or an artist, or maybe a writer, uh, an engineer. <laughs> and I'm trying to explain to him that tennis, I like tennis, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, an artist, I am not at all. An engineer, that, that could possibly be the, the, the right, the only option. Um, but, you know, I think uh, they're happy that I'm home and uh, processing everything. Yeah, I bet it must be hard to uh, to explain that to them uh, as a, as a dad. Um, must be really really difficult. But uh, I'm sure like, getting a hug from them meant the world. Cooking for them, they cooked for you as well. They made you some, some biscuits. Yeah, they did. They made me some biscuits, and then uh, it was uh, Marion's birthday last Tuesday, was it? Or oh, five days ago? You need to get that one. We, we did it. We made a cake with <laughs> with the kids, and I must tell you something. It was one of the best chocolate cake ever. <laughs> but I, I, I can't give the recipe to anyone because the kids were de- doing whatever they wanted. Really? So, <laughs> throwing it all in? A bit more chocolate, a little bit less flour, a bit more butter. So, yes, we cannot repeat that one, but it was quite fun. There you go. That's the future then. Not engineering, not artistry. I mean, you're a great cook anyway. Why not make, make, make kids cookbooks? Yeah, exactly. I mean, no, I think, uh, you know, I love racing. And uh, if I can get back to racing, that's what I think I'll... I would keep doing. Is, has what happened in Bahrain, has it changed your outlook at all in terms of getting back into a race car, going racing? I don't think it's changed that much what I like to do in terms of occurring racing, but uh, definitely it's changed my life. You know, I think uh, when you have uh, an experience like this, where you're so close from, from ending it, um, you see things differently. And, uh, but for the best, you know, I, I don't wish anyone to leave what I went through. But um, really, I think when you when you can come out of it, you are stronger and better and uh, enjoying a little bit more everything. Um, but saying that, I am still the one I was before, and I still like racing. And ideally, when my left hand loses me, I would like to jump back in a car. <laughs> I bet, and you've got um, you've got a very special helmet that you need to need to make some good use of. Yes, I mean that is. Uh, <laughs> it was one of the hardest thing not to run in Abu Dhabi when you know when I I knew I couldn't make it really that was that was hard to imagine that I wasn't going to drive with the helmet um saying that I think next time I jump back in a car I will wear it and uh, I wear it properly because it's it's got to be driven yeah absolutely it's a beautiful beautiful helmet it means I mean, it just means so much, doesn't it, to have that from the kids. It's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I want to run through with you saying goodbye to the team as well. How was that? You want me, you want to make me cry? Crying. <laughs> I mean, it was, yes. You know, we spent 90, 98 races together at the end. We didn't quite get to 100. But uh, five years of my life, uh, and, and you know, we've been going through so much together, um, as you as you would in in sports generally. But really, I mean, having that that day where I could come and say goodbye to the boys and and, and hug any of them, it was very special. And uh, you know, I was I was actually a bit 
I wasn't looking forward to go to Abu Dhabi racing because I knew it was going to be the last one. I didn't know how, how, I could, how I would handle it. So the face has decided another way. And, and on that aspect, I don't have to do Abu Dhabi and say goodbye there. But it was, um, it was hard just to, you know, little things when I swipe my pass out of the, the, the paddock on the, on the thing is written F1 driver. And I thought, oh, this may be the last time, you know, that I swipe my pass and it's written F1 driver. No, it's maybe X F1 driver next time around. And it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's 10 years of my life. It's a big chunk. It's 30%. And uh, obviously, it's, um, it, it was a lot of emotions. Uh, but also, you know, I'm alive. I'm going to go probably driving again. And uh, who knows, I already came once back in Formula 1. So who knows, I may, I may come back in, in some time. This, this is it. This is it. You can come back anytime. Um, I want to look at some of your, your, your best moments as well. We've got a, a couple of races here um, because... You had 10 podiums in Formula One. You, you had some astonishing races, some brilliant memories. Yes. I mean, uh, India 2013, I think, is a great one. We, uh, we gambled a bit in quali and started 17th and then came back finishing third. Um, that's my last podium in Spa as well. You know, I think whenever I had the car that was able to um, give me the possibility to, to do something, I, uh, I jumped on the occasion. Most of the time, um, you know, I think uh, that's really been one of my uh, my strengths. Um, and uh, sadly, the last few years, we just didn't quite get the car to uh, to do that. But um, I mean, you know, when when you're a kid and you, and people are going to tell you you're going to do almost 200 Grand Prix and, and be absolutely, it's um, you're so young that one in Bahrain so young man it feels like a, it feels like an age ago but you did um you, you had such success comparative success when you started out with Haas I remember you know in, in Bahrain and uh, and in Australia and you cross the line and you're saying this is a win for us guys this is a win it was to achieve that with a new team to completely turn around the fortunes of a new team coming into the sport must have given you you know a huge amount of of uh, I guess pride as well Yes, for sure. I mean, uh, for sure, it's been uh, it's been a great adventure with Haas and six in Australia. We, we got lucky on that race, but then the next race we were fifth um, and, and flying, you know, on a brand new team. And uh, I think, you know, uh, self confidence has never been my my strongest point. But uh, obviously, when I look back at some of the races and results I've made, I uh, I think I can be very proud. And uh, as I say, I don't think I'm quite done with racing that's what I love doing and even though I had a, a close call a couple of weeks ago I still think it's uh, it's part of myself and to be who I am to be a good dad a good husband an happy chap I need to go racing um, we knew that the Formula One dream was coming to an end this year anyway what are you interested in next from a racing perspective is it is it in the States would it be Formula E would it be World Endurance what's the what's what would you like to do um, actually, I'm very open on, on what's next. I haven't really made a clear plan yet. I think, um, no, I give myself a bit more time than I did before, just looking at every option. Uh, what I want to do is to win races. That is, that is, that has to happen. You know, I, uh, I can't go somewhere racing if I can't win races. And, and, and that really is something that, uh, I, um, I told you many times in interview, you know, when we knew it was going to an end and I said, yes, I'm sad. I'm going to leave Formula One and, and Formula One has been such an important part of my life. And I would be always grateful for, for that, but no, I need to win races. Absolutely. So wherever you go, you need to be in a team where you can, where you can win. Yes, exactly. Somewhere I can, I can win and, and, and have fun and, and race at the front. You know, uh, I'm not saying I didn't have fun in Formula 1, not at all, but I'll just say that when you're a competitor, if you want the extra fun, then you need to win races. What will you miss the most about Formula 1? Driving the car, uh, probably. Um, going to great places, new circuits uh, around the world. But um, I mean, yeah, just a general lifestyle, you know. Uh, as I say, when I left the paddock, I hated that paddock so many times, but I love it so much as well, you know. And uh, it's really a love-hate relation uh, where <laughs> when things are going right, this is the best place to be. And when things are not quite right, this is the worst, worst place to be. Um, but I think it's, it's those emotions and those moments that, uh, that I will miss. 
you spoke earlier in the year about how difficult it had been with a fan base which at times hadn't treated you very kindly. How different has it been these last few weeks being showered with love and good messages coming your way from around the world? Yeah, finally, social media have been, have been great. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure I had to go that far to make it uh, to make it that way. But yes, it's been it's been beautiful to see so many people uh, wishing me well and, and, and you know sending loves and so on. And, and really, it's been it means a lot when uh, when you know you, you can't go racing. It's hard. You you suffer. The pain is here. Uh, you know, I, I joke about it, but it's still still quite quite painful. And uh, obviously, there's a lot of things I cannot do uh, at the minute. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm here, and uh, and I think I'm sharing much more as well with the fans, just because they've been nice to me. And when people are nice to you, you just want to give a little bit more. Yeah, I can understand that. And it's you know, it's a fan base that really has, I think, reappraised because of what happened, and 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 remembered and looked back on. You know all of your successes and, and, and all the way through as well, not just Formula One, but your path to Formula One and your level of success that you attained all the way through. I mean, we met first time back in the GP2 days, which seems like a million years ago now. And, this, you know, the struggle that you guys take to, uh, to even reach Formula One, the hard work that it takes, the years of sacrifice and struggle is it's huge. Yeah, it's it's a lot of you know we don't have any te- when you're a teenager you don't have that part of your life when you're a young adult you don't have that part of your life you know you just give it everything to racing and um, that's why it's also hard to stop because you've you've been giving so much to to it that you don't really want to stop because it's like yeah well you know I've been giving 20 years of my life which is which is 60 something percent <laughs> and uh, I don't really want to stop right now I don't feel like it and and I guess that's uh, you know that's that's a hard decision. Um, will you go into TV? Would you come and do commentary or punditry in in France or Switzerland? Or? I don't know. I I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like it right now. Uh, but uh, because I think, as I say, I still want to go racing, and I think that's that's quite important. But uh, very happy to come sometimes and give you a bit of a uh, no, yeah, help and you know assistance and, and you know be be with you. You would always be very, very welcome on uh, on any of our shows, right, man? We'd love to have you on. Um, do a bit of punditry for us now. Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, one last race. Who's who's your money on today? Um, I think uh, on today I see Lewis, Max, and Valtteri. That would be my podium. Okay. Um, it was it was a good qualifying yesterday. It was quite intense. Um, I think third place in the Constructor Championship is quite exciting as well. Um, I see I see Racing Point being well positioned for that one, even though Orlando did a brilliant quality yesterday. Uh, but I think Sergio is going to put something uh, out from the back and, and the Racing Point has always been good in, in the race here. See, there you go. You passed the audition. Perfect. Come on the show anytime. <laughs> Um, mate, listen, we are all so glad that you are, are, are healthy and well, that you are at home with Marion and the kids. Um, we miss having you here so much and being able to say goodbye properly. But as you've said, and as we've said, the only important thing is that, is that you're all right and that you're home, man. And uh, thank you for so many wonderful memories over the years. I know that your racing career isn't at an end yet and can't wait to see you back in a racing car. But uh, love from all of us, from all of the fans to you. Go well, take care, have a really happy Christmas and uh, we can't wait to see you in a racing car again soon, mate. Yeah. You too, guys, and have a good last one. I'll be watching and uh, probably on the home trainer. I'll be cycling and watching at the same time and, yeah, have a, have a great Christmas. Uh, thanks for everything and I'll see you around. Don't worry. Yeah, you will, man. Good stuff. Take care, mate. See you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks, folks.